So I keep getting emails and questions on YouTube about the two main guitars that I'm using in the lesson videos. They're not even that expensive of guitars, but I think they both sound great for country and bluegrass music. Uh, this one here, which is my Martin D15. And uh, the next one that I'll show you all is my Martin D16 GT. Both of these guitars, I think they sound great. Uh, this D15 right here, I actually, uh, I had to get some work done on this recently by a guy that a lot of y'all are probably familiar with. Uh, he posts a lot of videos to YouTube. He's got an awesome YouTube channel, one of my favorite YouTube channels, uh, Randy Schardiger. And if you haven't watched his videos, I would highly recommend that. There'll be a link right below this video. Uh, you can go check out his YouTube channel. He posts guitar repair videos, um, guitar tips. He's got some guitar lessons, and they're all real funny. I think y'all will like them. So anyways, uh, this guitar that I'm holding right here, this is a Martin D15. I've used it in a bunch of the videos on the site. Um, people always ask about this guitar. I think it's got a really good sound. And for country and bluegrass, I'm always looking for a guitar that's got that nice natural wood sound. You know? And I think Martin guitars, for me, I think Martin has the sound that I'm going for. <laughs> good for doing those nice flat picking runs like that and it's also really good for strumming for the strings I like to use elixir nanoweb phosphor bronze and if you're looking for the elixir nanowebs they also have a bronze version make sure you get the phosphor bronze the bronze Nanowebs, they're a little too bright for my taste. The phosphor bronze, they've got a nice, rich tone, really a really nice tone on these. And uh, I use medium gauge strings. If you like the lighter gauge strings, the Elixir Nanoweb uh, phosphor bronze lights, also awesome. And as far as uh, capo goes, I've tried a lot of capos. This one here, it's the G7th is the brand, and it's the Nashville Capo. G7th Nashville Capo. And this one's a little beat up, but the thing I like about this Capo is that it's really low profile. And it's a little strange, the little, um, whatever it's called, the little clamps, they stick out this way instead of being back behind the neck. But after you get used to that, I actually prefer it because so low profile, you don't even know it's there when you're playing your open chords. So that's a great thing about this capo, and they're not that expensive. So check out this capo, highly recommend this one. Real quick, while we're talking about the capo, uh, here's something that's pretty interesting. So my whole life, when I wasn't using the capo, I pretty much just put it right here on the uh, on the headstock. Just clip it right there, real convenient, whatever. Uh, I was watching some dude's YouTube channel, and he was talking about how you, know, you shouldn't put it right here because it takes a lot of the sound away from your acoustic guitar. And I think uh, there is a difference. I, I do think it makes a difference. So what, you can test this out. Um, it's kind of exaggerates the point, but you'll see if you take your left hand and you just grip your headstock like that, and then take your pick and pick the first and second strings. Put your, put your ear over the sound hole so you can hear it real well. And then just, just lift up your left hand as you're picking. And then put it back down, lift it up. I don't 
know if you can hear that on the video, but uh, right here with my ear over the guitar, it's amazing, you know, how much uh, clamp in my left hand on the headstock, how much that takes away from the vibration of the sound and how much it just mutes the sound of your acoustic. So I'm not sure if putting your capo on the headstock it takes away as much sound. I don't think it does just because uh, not quite as much surface area, you know, holding down on the headstock, preventing the vibrations. But um, I don't know, since I watched that video, the guy talking about that, I've pretty much taken my capo off when I'm playing, especially when I'm recording. I like having that nice full sound. Here's my D16 GT, and this is not that expensive of a guitar either, but I think it sounds great for country and bluegrass music. Um, I have done one thing to this guitar. I've added these custom bone bridge pins right here. Um, I think that they add a lot of extra sustain to the, the guitar. You know, the notes ring out a lot longer. I think before they usually come, these guitars usually come with plastic bridge pins. Or I think they're plastic, I'm not sure, but I added these bone ones in there and I was pretty amazed at the difference. So uh, you might want to check that out for adding those to your guitar. There's a link below this YouTube video. You can go check out the, uh, the website that I ordered these from. I think they're made by this guy named Bob Colosi. And when you order them, they come a little fat, like they won't fit in your, your uh, the holes, you know, to hold the strings, they won't go all the way down. So you gotta take sandpaper and kind of sand them off, sand them down a little bit so they'll fit, a custom fit to your guitar, but uh, definitely worth it. Check those out. Um, this guitar, Sitka spruce top, mahogany backs and sides. I think it's got that, that really nice natural wood tone that uh, we're, all, we're going for here. picking finger style stuff as well I think so those are the two guitars that I play in the lesson videos most of the time you know, not super expensive guitars but I think they're great for country and bluegrass um, anyways thanks for watching to the end of this video uh, again check out Randy Schardiger's YouTube channel link below this video here I know y'all like his stuff as well um, other than that I appreciate everybody's support over here at countryguitaronline.com and hope to see you all at the next lesson video.